Today's home buyers demand homes that are comfortable, durable, and energy efficient. And one of the ways to make a home more comfortable and energy efficient is to build a warmer wall assembly. The obvious way to do that is with a foam sheeting product. With me today is Doug Bybee from Dow Building Materials. Hi, Doug, Steve. you guys manufacture a variety of foam products. Tell me about them. Okay. There's three main types of foam plastic insulation. One is molded expanded polystyrene, which is abbreviated EPS. Another is extruded polystyrene, which is abbreviated XPS. And the third is isocyanurate, which is just abbreviated ISO. And I have examples of them here. Here's a piece of EPS. It's generally white in color and is composed of a lot of tiny beads that are fused together to make a board. A second kind is extruded polystyrene, or XPS. This is one example. It is a, a single board with millions of tiny cells in it. And the third is polyisocyanurate, which is generally tan in color and has a lot of different kinds of facers on it. It also is composed of many uh, tiny bubbles with gases in them. And what these bubbles do and what the boards do is slow down heat flow through the board. Air pockets trap the air. That's right. Now, uh, thermal bridging is a big issue uh, because most homes have up to 25% of their wall areas framing. That's right, Steve. Therefore, 25% of the wall is not insulated if all you use is cavity insulation. So it's very important to insulate the entire outside of the house with something like foam sheathing. Tell me about how you install this product. Well, installation is very easy since it's lightweight. It's much lighter than other kinds of sheathing. So you put a board up and you can either nail it or staple it and you put uh, fasteners about every 12 inches on center around the perimeter and 16 inches on center in the field of the board. Now uh, tell me about corner bracing. Corner bracing since uh, sheathing, foam plastic sheathing is not a structural sheathing, it does have to be braced per sections in the building code. One acceptable way is diagonal bracing, and you can use a 1x4 wood let in, or you can use metal T-strap bracing. Another way that's often used is a wood panel in the corners and every 25 feet down the wall, something like OSB or plywood bracing. Air infiltration is really important. Yeah, air infiltration can account for up to 38% of the heat loss in a typical house. So it is very important to reduce the amount of air that moves in and out through the wall because you're robbing uh, the house of the energy you've paid for. So a foam sheathing applied directly to studs or over OSB can reduce the amount of air that moves through the wall. Tell me about the R value of foam sheathings and how you can meet the energy code with these products. The R value can vary from about R3 or maybe R2.5 up to a typical sheathing product might be R5 which is one inch thick foam. In some areas of the country they actually use inch and a half foam which is R7.5. A warmer wall means less potential for moisture to reach its dew point, which means less potential for mold. That's right, Steve. It's important to remember that uh, cold surfaces is what can cause condensation. And in a wall, if you have a warmer outside surface on the wall, then you're less likely to have condensation on that surface. So foam sheathing is a good way to keep the outside surface of the wall warmer so that when the water vapor in the house is trying to move toward the outside when it's cold outside, when it meets a surface that's warmer, it's less likely to produce condensation. Also, it's important to remember you don't actually have to get liquid condensation to have a moisture problem. Mold and those other kinds of things can happen at high humidities, like 70 or 80 percent humidity. One way to think about condensation could be with a, a soft drink can, for instance. Uh, and it, when it's hot, hot day in the summer, you take a cold can of uh, cold drink out of the refrigerator, you're going to get condensation on the outside of that can. And that's because the water vapor in the air is condensing on that cold surface. The same thing can happen in walls when that uh, warm, moist vapor meets a cold surface. And if the sheathing's cold, you could get that condensation there. And moisture contributes to the potential for mold. So if we reduce moisture problems, we're less likely to have mold problems. Well, Doug, great information. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Steve. If you'd like to learn more information about foam sheathings, check out the other videos on this site.